Welcome to Hair Biz Radio with your host, Zakira and Mikey. And today we have Soyini of Salon Soy um, joining us. She is a curly hair expert, a mom of three, business owner, and salon owner as well. And she's going to be talking to us today a lot about natural hair, curly hair, the transition between owning a salon and going into a salon suite. Um, we're just going to have a lot of fun today. I'm actually really hyped about this because... Mikey loves curly hair. I love curly <laughs> You know, I love the curly hair business right? because I think there's a lot of opportunity in it. It Um, is. And then, you know, for us us on our side, we're not as big in the curly hair business yet, but we're coming for it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our clients, you know, we want to make them bigger in the industry because I think there's so much opportunity. So to get some knowledge from you and kind of your experiences and some of the trends, I am hyped about this. Awesome. (laughs) Well, let's dive right into it. Um, talk to us a little bit about your background, like how you got started in the hair industry, when you got started in the hair industry. How was that for you? It was um, it was great, actually. Um, I didn't expect to start in the hair industry, but um, when it was time for me to go to school, my mother recognized. She was like, okay, um, you're always doing your friend's hair. You know, you're doing your hair all the time, spending hours in the mirror. Why don't you go to cosmetology school? Mm -hmm. And I was actually like, in the line registering to go to Clark at the time. And she and then I was like, you know what? Maybe I should go because I have no idea what I want to do here at school. And I didn't want to waste their money, you know, because school is so expensive. Clark is expensive. Expensive, okay. you know. <laughs> and so many people have that story, you know, and they, they're in debt. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm I'm thankful that my mother, you know, early on just recognized, you know, my gift and, and sh- you know, shifted me into that. So... I started that, and that was back in the day, like, because <laughs> I've been in this business for almost 19 years now. I started in, um, I got my license in 99, actually, so um, that was, um, yeah, that was the start of it, basically goes going to cosmetology school mm-hmm. and getting that theory, getting the license, you know, all the official So what was um, the difference going to cosmetology school back in 99? Versus someone who's interested in going to cosmetology school now, what what is that gap filler? Like, how was your experience back in 99? And, and what do you think someone going now in 2018 could experience 20 years later? Well, for me back then, it felt like, especially... Um, I was always one... Like, I started wearing my hair curly, mm-hmm. like, back then, right? So, back then, it wasn't as a you know, uh, tr- I guess I don't want to say trend, but it just wasn't, a lot of people weren't doing that. It was more heavily like chemical, like relaxers gotcha. and stuff like that. So when we were going to school, we mainly focused on basically taking curly hair and making it straight. So now, and from the niche that I'm in, and I'm not speaking for the whole cosmetology, you know, as a whole, mm-hmm. But the niche that I'm in, I could say that it's different because we have so much information now. Like, that is what we're doing, you Mm -hmm. know, is a lot of people are embracing their curly hair. So back then it wasn't that. And so now the shift is, okay, you know, people are wearing their hair curly and they could – go to school to learn about curly hair. There's so much information on YouTube University about curly hair. So I feel like it's a different, you know, time. Yeah. You know, people are more, you know, embracing of their curly, their hair. curly hair versus as like trying to change it to being straight. Yeah. So yeah. what do you think, um, what do you think the change was like from people back then wanting to wear their hair straight all the time to now um, specifically women of color, you know, embracing their natural curls or wanting to find different products that work well for their curls? What do you think that change was? I think, I mean, because we've had it in the 70s, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had that. And then, of course, you know, we we tried to conform Mm -hmm. and people got, you know, you know, um, they started having jobs and they feel like they needed to, you know, fit in with, you know, mainstream. Mm-hmm. And I feel like now I think that it's it's another generation of awareness that's coming on. And I think that people got tired of, you know, not being who they are and sitting in a chair and burning. Mm. And I think that another thing is they realize that they could still have the best of both worlds. If they want to wear their hair straight, you don't have to burn and get a live relaxer to do that. Like you can still have healthy hair, you know, have 
having it heat pressed. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can still get damaged now with, you know, (laughs) if the wrong person does it, but you know, you can still have that option of going back and forth to wearing your hair straight and curly and it's still looking beautiful, you know, both ways. So I think that now, um, back in the day, and, and two, back in the day, we didn't really have the products and stuff right. that were working yeah. with our hair. And now a lot of the industries, they saw that void and they're like, oh, a new consumer. So now we have the product that is, you know, that can work with our curly textured hair yeah not the heavy greases and mineral oils our hair can still if we want to wear it straight our hair can still flow and be healthy and you know bounce and stuff and before it was more like you know people didn't really know what to use on their hair they were still using grease and stuff like that yeah. so i think that that too is a big part of it is that the products have changed as well i think i so. never yeah. thought about that one that's like oh, a yeah. really good point there about how how so much has changed just kind of the evolution like with Fenty with the makeup mm-hmm. right it's like you know it's really targeted and it really works right. and everyone's so excited but like over the last 20 years especially obviously everyone now knows how big the hair industry is and there's different segments and targeting those different segments is pretty important oh, yeah. yeah especially the natural hair care lines now they're trying to connect more with Um, women when it comes to their hair, you Mm -hmm. know, sending them free products or doing different campaigns. I remember doing a campaign with a lot of body um, and we got to try the products and then they talked to us about what are some of the stereotypes that you got growing up when it came to your hair or like, um, what do you love about your hair? You know, what is the point of wearing your hair natural? Like, how does that reflect your inner beauty? Right. Um, So companies like that, like they, they really are trying to get people to embrace, you know, their natural curls versus wearing experience extensions all the time right and just wearing you know wearing your hair straight too you know because before you know I guess like even um you know the mainstream I don't even think that they even knew that our hair was curly yeah you know what I mean because we would always like either press it or um straighten it with that so hot comb. with I that hot comb right hot comb. <laughs> exactly so it was like a whole like oh my god who knew yeah that their hair was even curly I mean I even had people you know still come up to me and be like so Oh, your hair does that? I'm like, yeah, it does. It's genetic. It does that. (laughs) Like, you know, most people of color are not born with curly hair. I mean, you have the, I mean, excuse me, with straight hair. I mean, you have those exceptions that, you know, some people do have straight hair naturally. But for the majority, people of colors have straight, I mean, curly hair. Yeah. Yeah. I think now, too, thankfully, a lot of... (laughs) um, There's a lot more, I don't know how to say it politically correct, a lot more mixing going on. Yeah. So you get like a lot of interracial couples and stuff. (laughs) So the kids come and it's like all sorts a little bit different. Yeah. It's not the other. Beautiful babies, by the way. Right. God. (laughs) But like, and it's just things, there's a lot, it's just different now. It's different. But, and and I always like say this because I teach this point too in my salon that it's crazy because there's no, Texture doesn't have like a race really because you can have someone that is from like um, Jewish descent. My girl's um, grandmother is Jewish. So you could have like someone from Jewish descent and someone from an African diaspora descent and their hair can almost be similar. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like I teach more of, you know, less talk about the texture of the hair, not the ethnicity of the hair, because you could be from all over different like you can have like an interracial couple you know and come out with one texture of hair and you can have another interracial couple or a black person and all those heads could be almost similar you know what I mean Mm -hmm. so it's more about the texture of the hair and not really you know the ethnic makeup yeah if you so yeah if you will yeah okay yeah I like that and Mm -hmm. you know just with all the different textures especially now I think a lot of people like before we got started, we were kind of talking about some of the other brands and stuff that kind of capitalize on natural hair because, you know, there are, you know, everyone's that say, hey, this is the thing that gets me and I'm fine with it. But like they're like, oh, I'm natural, but they still wear natural hair extensions to kind of make it like that real big. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and like more density. Yeah. Dense. Like mm-hmm. turn the volume up. I can't. See yeah. It. All right. You know? Like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, and that's that's fantastic. Like, you know, you have the 4A, B, C yeah. hair. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just been for us on our side, you know, it's been interesting looking at the trends for that as well and how some of that stuff has been changing and more products for right. for that. Um, and yeah. I think it's great because, I mean, for a while, I mean, we've had, you know, 
the extensions to add to straight hair. Oh, so yeah, why sure. not have the, you know, the extensions and the different textures and looks to add to curly hair? I it know, only I makes think, sense. I think even people today, it's it's like they want to change their look so often. So they might be natural. <laughs> I mean, literally, I mean, the women mm -hmm. that I see, they're natural this week. Mm -hmm. Then they maybe had it pressed out. The, mm -hmm. follow, the next day or the next week, they have a wig on. Yeah. Then they got like a quick, like mm -hmm. quick weave or something because they yeah. didn't want to do this, that, the other. And it's just like the styles change so yeah. much. Yeah, you get 10 for one in one person. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's incredible. It's just like people just want to be. And I think it's a lot to do with, I think a lot with like the social media and other stuff with the mm -hmm. celebrities and the influencers who like are paid to do this stuff right and it's like the general public is trying to keep up right you know it's difficult to keep up with that but you know hey each of their own to each of their own <laughs> i mean but it's and it's cool i'm sorry no go ahead it's <laughs> i mean it's good to keep up i mean not even keep up but it, you know if you want to change your look like there's you know things out here that you could you know change your look one day it's yeah. easy things like you can throw in some clippings one day you can throw in another color one day so or wigs, yeah. you know what I mean? So I just think that it's great that people have that expression. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that they can be themselves through their hair. Yeah. I'm yeah. stuck. Like, <laughs> I can put on a hat, but I mean, other than that, you know, I got to, you know, me and my blonde hair, receding <laughs> hairline. I'm screwed. I got, nothing, I got nothing I can Curl. play with over here. <laughs> hey, I seen them do miracles online uh, no, with I these, the like, with, weave, these, with the, the man, man weaves. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, I got to get you a man weave, Mikey. <laughs> nah, I, I put on a um, we, we have, I put on a bonnet we got like these bonnet samples mm -hmm. and I put online everyone went crazy they were so excited to see me wearing a bonnet for some reason I was that's like that's hilarious this thing is comfortable. It was like, this pink, comfortable. Silky like the <laughs> I was like this thing is nice okay yeah I like this but other than that yeah you're not gonna see me wearing wigs or anything I'm yeah. just not that right. fashionable not that right. guy. I'm, not that, I'm not that fashionable but oh, it's okay Lord. Um, so, so I talked to us a little bit about what are some of the techniques that you um, were either self-taught or that you picked up throughout the years that you weren't taught in cosmetology school? That's like everything. everything. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> that's everything. I mean, I would say like cosmetology school is good. Like everything that you do, you're going to pick up something yeah. from it. You know what I mean? Like and cosmetology school taught me theory, hair theory, basic information yeah. that to pass day board. You know, <laughs> I mean, I guess, you know, like maybe if you go to a specific school, like, you know, like an Invader school or Paul Mitchell or something mm -hmm. like that, maybe it's a little bit more different. You get that, you know, I guess that product base because that's who they are. You get that. But for me, it was not even products. It didn't even teach me products. So it just taught me back in the day theory of hair. And then when I got into the salon and that's when I started, you know, Product knowledge, cuts, colors, gotcha. all of those things, and just not one salon. Like, I've worked in different salons. I've worked in, you know, all white salons. I've worked in, you know, majority black salons. I, you know, I've worked in multicultural salons. Mm -hmm. So, I think that angle has taught me a lot too, because, um, like, in all of those um, experiences, I came away with something yeah. different. Especially, you know, like when I was dealing, when I was in like mostly all white salons, all you're doing basically is cutting color. So I, oh my God, like I was up to my head and cutting color, but it taught me how to, you know, cut and color, yeah. you know? So, and then when I went to a lot of the, you know, um, black salons, it taught me more of like the styling and the creativity and the endless creativity, mm -hmm. you know, all these short styles, long styles, Marcel's, I mean, all yeah. these different things. So I guess I just, you know, took away a lot of different techniques from my transition, my transitions to different salons. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how did that um, prepare you? Because you're a salon owner now. Mm -hmm. um, how did that prepare you for owning your own salon? Well, it prepared me to deal with different clientele, mm -hmm. you know, and different hair textures, different people like I can I can cut pretty much everyone's hair like I can cut from the straight person's hair to the curly person's hair so it gave me that experience and that's what I tell people who are 
you know, and looking into the hair industry, like you just can't just watch YouTube. Yeah. Like you really <laughs> need to go to cosmetology school because everybody feels like they can do hair for a certain, you know, reason. Mm -hmm. Like it's just that, yeah, you have hair on your head, just like you have teeth, but you still need to go to the dentist. Right. Like you still need that professional edge, you know, because I mean, I see girls on YouTube cutting their own hair and I just want to scream. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, like just go to the, just, stop. just go <laughs> to someone. I mean, even just if, if you're going to do cut and color, or any type of chemical, go to a stylist, please. I don't even cut my own hair. I don't even, you know, do my own hair oh, sometimes. Wow. Like, I go to another professional when it's time for my hair to get cut, you know, and have them do that. And I just feel like, please go to cosmetology school if that's what you want to do. Like, don't look at, I mean, you can look at YouTube for inspiration. I look at YouTube for inspiration. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying just for that, like, if you're trying to go into this business, go through it through the right avenue and, yeah. you know, go to cosmetology school and get that experience Definitely. in different salons too. Yeah. I yeah. think that's a big thing. Yeah, yeah. I think it gives you that starting base. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of like your first couple years of college. Not that I really know, but <laughs> in theory. <laughs> so like the first couple years of college, you get there and you're like, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm just going to take these general classes for now. That's and then so as it you kind of yeah. grow, then you're going to kind of go into, you know what? I really like color. I'm going to be a color specialist. Exactly. Or I'm going to be a natural hair specialist. You niche maybe it I'm out. Be a wig specialist. And then mm -hmm. as you get going, maybe you're going to switch to different, uh, you know, different different sides but yeah. you kind of just get you that base so you kind of have an idea I think it's really important it is it is yeah and that's exactly right like you go you give you it gives you that base and then once you start growing and experiencing certain things and you know seeing that you're good at one thing it's like oh okay well let me move over here and maybe this will be my niche maybe this is yeah you know something that I'm good at and need to pursue but have that base, Definitely. like you said, because a lot of stylists, you know, honestly, like, you know, I've I've gotten so many clients that say, you know what, she didn't do my hair right because she said that she did natural hair, but all of her clients were weaves, and then I was wondering <laughs> why my hair has heat damage, and it's like, oh my gosh, come on, stylist, just niche yourself out. Yeah, I like that. Niche it out yeah. because like you're gonna like be good, you know, you're good at your what you're good at mm -hmm. at that time, and. If you are, if you knit yourself out and if you follow what you're good at, then more people are going to come for that service. Yeah. Yeah. And stop trying to like, you know, take everyone, you know, because that's where you get into trouble. That's when oh, bad no, things sure. happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have happy clients. Yeah. Um, so you own a salon. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you previously owned a salon. Um, you right. talked about having, you know, four stylists in the salon. Mm -hmm. um, being in all those different salons, multicultural, Caucasian, African-American salons, that kind of helped you and prepared you for your own salon. Right. So what was that transition like going from someone else's salon to building your own salon? What were some of the obstacles that you went through? What did that look like? Okay, so first people of all. right now, like, <laughs> they're putting their hair out because they're like, oh, my God, you know, I'm trying to get this salon and it's just not working. Right. <laughs> it's funny because the industry has changed now, you know, like um, back when I started the salon, salons were still like, you know, like that's what it was. Yeah. That's where you went. Like people were going into like, you know, a lot of stylists, seasoned stylists, that's where they went to a salon. And now you have like a lot of suites and stuff now. So I guess like, for that change, I started in 2008, right when the market was crashing. So that was crazy in itself. So, <laughs> but um, let me see, what did I learn? Um, I took away a lot of policy mm -hmm. from like a lot of the salons. Yeah. Like, you know, um, like, should I do commission? Should I do booth rent? Like just certain things like that. Yeah. Like, you know, um, policy, um, what else? Um, so when you opened your salon where you had you had <coughs> uh, four chairs, correct? Correct. So what did you do when you did that? Did you have booth rent or did you do it the was commission? commission? It commission. was commission at first. What made you choose uh, commission over booth rent? Because obviously booth rent is maybe a little less to manage. Mm -hmm. Commission, right. a lot of things can go wrong with money just kind of disappears right. and free yeah. services. You know, I have a lot of friends that are stylists and I hear right. these horror stories still. So, you know, what, what made you go that route? I think what... What the idea that I was having back then is I wanted a consistent mm. 
I want consistency. Mm-hmm. When you have like a lot of booth renters, um, they're their own contractors. So basically, they could bring in, you know, they could use Paul Mitchell over here. Then they, somebody could use Nioxin or somebody can use Sebastian or whatever. I wanted a more, you know, um, across the board, ab- across the consistency, board yeah. consistency. I wanted basically all our clients to have the same type of experience. Mm-hmm. All across the board. So that's what I was aiming for. Now, would I do that now? I don't know <laughs> <laughs> if I were to do that, you know. Um, but that's I, that was the thought process back then. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like just from a lot of the other guests that we've had that, you know, have been part of st- uh, salons, have their own, and then now a lot of them, you know, go to the salon suite model. Mm-hmm. It seems like a lot more stylists were open to working in these salons. I had 20 chairs. They're all glamorous. It's this big thing that you come into. <laughs> and then like the entrepreneurial kick, it's like everyone's mm-hmm. on the internet and learning about being an entrepreneur and all right. this other kind of stuff. And then, you know, the smart real estate people were like, oh, let's build these salon suites. Oh, that was such a and good... It, and it's just like the salon suite business is killing it's, it's it. Killing it's killing it. It's real estate. It makes it so much easier for mm-hmm. people to have their own salon. Well, you know, it's like a salon suite. It's their own space. They don't mm-hmm. have to worry about all these other people coming in and out. Yeah. Like, and that wasn't, I, you know, I wasn't really looking at the salon industry 15 years ago, but I guarantee 15 years ago, there was a lot less chance of finding a salon suite space. It, yeah, that's true. Very true. Because like the salons had the, the power. It was more, you know. Like, that's where you went. And I think, too, times have just changed. You know, like back then we didn't it wasn't so Internet heavy. So now, like a lot of people are more mobile, more people are, you know, um, want ownership of their time. You know, so a lot of people want to set their own hours. They don't want to clock in anywhere. They don't want to, you know, have to be at the salon from nine to five and just sit and just wait if a client was going to show up and, you know, they want to have yeah. more control over their, their time and their lives. So I think that model for a seasoned stylist was more fitting and more, you know, attractive. So what was uh, your reasoning behind closing down the salon um, and transitioning into the salon suite? I was stressed out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the level of stress. <laughs> the level of stress. I had two kids at the time and uh, it's just still to this day, even with a salon suite, it's still hard with kids and career. But, you know, back then having that, it was almost another entity. It was like another, you know, it was like my second home. Yeah. It was like I have a home and I have to pay these bills at the home. And then I have this whole entity and I have to pay the bills at this entity. Mm-hmm. And then I have to see that this entity, you know, is running properly. And I didn't have a salon manager. And I didn't. Mm-hmm. I was the creative person and the business person. Oh, wow. Super no, no. Yeah. Don't no. do it. <laughs> like you need to have someone who is running the business, but you know, of the salon and then the creator. Because to do both of those roles, it's it's insane. I mean, you're setting yourself up to me for failure because you have to have another, you have to duplicate yourself. Like you can't be, you know, doing everything. So that was just like, yeah. So I was stressed out, you know, and I did things wrong and I'm, I'm glad that I learned from those mistakes, you know, because I mean, I wouldn't be as knowledgeable if I didn't, you know? So, yeah. So, so so being, um, there's a lot of women in the industry now who are mommies. Um, and they may be saying, oh, my God, how can I balance, you know, being a business owner and a mommy? What are some of the things that you do to keep that balance? Girl, I go exercise. <laughs> 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 um, really, to keep that balance, I'm a huge um, planner and writer oh, yeah. out of my schedule. So, like, you, to me, to keep the balance, I don't even know if you ever have a balance, though, really, to be quite honest. But you try, you just try to make it work, yeah. you know. And what you can do is just delegate, you know, have people. If you have a support system at home, maybe delegate, you know, who's going to, you know, do certain roles yeah. with the kids when you need to do, you know, have, you know, work time. And write out your schedule. Write out your goals. Write out times that you need to do each thing. On To me, that's Sunday. Sundays I sit down and I write out my week. What do I have to do this week? This, 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 that. And then you, you put times to those things, yeah. you know. So for me, it's just writing out my schedule and delegation and getting other people, you know, to help you on board, yeah. on board to help you with it. I like that. Yeah, because really, I don't even know if there is going to ever be a balance because 
it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's not valid. <laughs> it's not. It's something's gonna, you know, shift yeah. way. You know, maybe one week you are, you know, going to the grocery store and you cooking healthy meals at home and. The next week you're at Chick Fil A because you got <laughs> clients at like six, six o'clock. Yeah. You know what I mean. <laughs> so I don't know if there's ever gonna be that unless you, you know, you can have afford to have a chef or something like that. But you know, <laughs> to there's me, actually in Atlanta they have because I'm looking at getting it because we we basically order delivery every single night because we don't have time to cook because right. I'm oh, yeah. pretty much always working. Mm -hmm. But there's this meal plan where it's like regis registered dietitians that create the actual meals. You have somewhat of a somewhat of a preset menu and you pick it up like twice a week. Is it like plated or something, something like that? Like but that? There's, okay. there's, some in it, there's some in Atlanta that you can do and it's real healthy. And mm -hmm. if you have a specific diet you're trying to meet, they'll yeah. kind of tweak it to that. Oh, that's and it's, good. I so we're going to switch because the takeout every night gets real expensive. It's really expensive. <laughs> or delivery actually is not even takeout. It's just delivery every yeah. night. Yeah. and like the health wise and everything yeah. else because you know i talk about all the time especially getting a little bit older how important as an entrepreneur and health how they correlate together it's it's everything it's everything i mean you have to watch that you have to take time because i i've gotten sick before you know i was sick for like almost two years wow. and like you you do you have to to watch that like that comes first because you can't do anything without your health yeah so yeah you're not going to be productive no you can't make it happen if you're not feeling well mm -hmm. yeah that's you know people always ask me they're like mikey you have that really know me they're like you have so much going on how do you do it I say I go to the gym in the morning. You and have I go to. to the gym at night. You have to twice a day. Yeah, yeah. for sanity. It's pretty much every mm -hmm. single day. You have to. You yeah. have to carve out that time because it's like, man. Do you <laughs> meditate. I want to start. I don't I want do, to start. I, I don't, don't do it yet. as much as, <laughs> but I'm in mean, whole into the whole, you know, affirmations yeah. and you know that whole thing. So there's an app called um, Headspace. And, oh really? And calm, the calm, calm. calm yeah, yeah, I saw calm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I haven't downloaded, really good but I haven't used apps. it yet. Medi yeah. Okay, yeah. I need to start that. Yeah, but I do have affirmation apps that come and they send me alerts oh, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, but yeah. I, I love affirmations. Um, yeah, she I loves daily, affirmations. So. Me too. <laughs> like built off affirmation. Hey. <laughs> That's what it's all about. You know, your word is your wand. Yeah. But so you're in the Salon Suisse now. Mm -hmm. um, tell everybody where you're located. I am located in Decatur. I'm at the Salon Lofts in Decatur now. Decatur where it's greater. That's right. Decatur where it's <laughs> gated the deck. That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> so right now you specialize in curly hair, natural mm -hmm. hair. So let's jump into curly hair, like the art of natural hair, curly hair. This is one of Mikey's favorite, favorite <laughs> things to talk Because I know the... I know a little bit about it, but not a lot. So like when I can learn from somebody that's mm -hmm. really experienced, that excites me. Because when it comes to hair, I want to be the most educated non-hair wearing guy you would ever <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I mean, this is this is great, yeah. So right, uh, spill the beans. Okay, so okay, um, what do you want to Let's know? talk about. You have a client who comes in. Um, mm -hmm. She really wants to wear her natural hair. She's mm -hmm. been wearing extensions for the longest time, um, and she doesn't know how to manage like her curl pattern. What do you tell her? Well, for one, I, I would set up some sort of goal, like yeah. hair goal. Mm -hmm. So I would say, okay, so you're saying that you want to wear your natural hair. Okay, so what does that mean to you? Are you going to be the type of client that you're just going to only wear your hair curly? Or are you going to go back and forth with wearing your hair curly and straight? So then once we define that answer, then mm -hmm. we go into an execution plan of what we're going to do, depending on that answer. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so what are some of your favorite types of hair to work with? So we have like 4A... For B, for C. So I don't subscribe to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I never have. I mean, I get it. I get that it's a, I guess it's a, um, it's a way to kind of like group the hair yeah. and define it, mm -hmm. you know, just by like maybe like the visual and the, but we have so many different textures. Yeah, teach us. Teach us. You know, us. we have so <laughs> many, like just even in one head, you mm -hmm. have three different things sometimes four mm. different curl patterns yeah so to define everything to a one little number is kind of crazy to me you know but i get that i it's get more the... from like a product side and that's right. why i like it because mm -hmm. you know if someone just came to me and said oh i've just you know or we were on the car we got an email i need like clip-ins for my natural hair it's kind of like because there are so many different variations, you have to kind of somewhat get in a like chair. a gauge. Yeah, a little bit of a gauge of mm -hmm. what that's going to be. Yeah. Right. Know, so and I get know, that. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of helpful. Obviously, 
for a perfectionist of natural <laughs> hair, you know, and the knowledge, <laughs> but just from like the product side, we you know right. that's where we get excited as far as like trying to figure out all these the right way. Right. But yeah, I can definitely tell that there's there's so many, and yeah. I get that. I get that because I mean, I even you know I don't say okay well, when somebody says they have four B, I'm like oh okay, so you have. I can see where you're thinking that you have this type of yeah. texture, and you're in this kind of you know realm of texture. I get that. It's more of a gauge, but we have so many different textures, yeah. you know. So to base it on those little numbers, yeah. it's just kind of like. <laughs> Okay. That's not it. <laughs> right. But I mean, I get it. You yeah, know, yeah. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's just, you know. So what are um, some of your favorite products to use for natural hair? Um, for someone who who um, intends to wear their hair curly, curly all, the time, all the time. Yeah. Like they want to just embrace their curly hair. Hmm. There's so many. Yeah. Um, like I know for me, um, I tried the whole natural hair thing and I'm not saying I'm done with it, but it just frustrates me because I don't know what products to use. Like I've used the Shea Moisture and it kind of dries my hair out. Mm -hmm. A lot of body is pretty good, um, mm -hmm. but I've used the mixed chicks. Like mm -hmm. I've used a lot of that stuff and it just doesn't work for my hair or I'm not applying it properly or, you know, utilizing it the proper way. So what are some products that... And then, see, I'll ask this question. I know my clients be like, you're so deep. Why do you get so deep? <laughs> I ask this question. So when you say that you want to wear your natural hair and something's not working for it, what is your, like, what is your goal? Right. Like, what, what are you seeing in your head that you want your hair to look like? Because that's very important. Yeah. Because I have clients that come in with a certain type of hair texture, and they show me this lady <laughs> that has another kind of hair texture, and they say, I want my hair to look like that. Well, sweetie, that's genetic. <laughs> like, you're not going to get your, I don't care what product you use, your hair is not going to do that. Yeah. So let's try to find what your hair is going to do at its texture, yeah. and let's get your mind wrapped around, do you like that? Are you going to be willing to, you know, wear that and feel beautiful? You know what I mean? So it's all on, like, what you, how you want to wear your hair. Because, and then, too, you know, each day your curls are going to change. Like, one day you might have some real good popping curls, mm -hmm. and then you go to sleep, and then the next day oh, you yeah. wake up, and it's something different, you know? So Is that because of, like, the environment, like, the humidity, rain, Just sleep, anything, laying, on laying on it, on you it. know, the... You know, product escaping from your hair. You know, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like showers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, environment, all of that. Okay. Yeah. So, that's what I would ask. Like, how, how first start off with, how do, how do you want your hair to look? Like, what do you see your hair? Because you might can look like that girl in the picture, but you might have to do something different. You might have to two-strand twist your hair mm. and put a roller at the end if yeah. you want it to look kind of, you know, loopy or springy or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you might have to apply a product and a technique to look a certain way. So... I mean, that's what, but I, I mean, to answer your question, I like different products. A lot of the products that I do like, um, mostly that work for, I guess, gauging it on me, like on my hair, I would say products that have water in it. Gotcha. So versus products that have oil. Some people, like, I'm not a huge oil fan. Yeah. Like, so, but some people like oil, maybe, you know, low, high porosity, low porosity, that whole thing. So, I mean, for me, W products that contain water, water a water base, base yeah. works mo well for me. And m more mousses, mm -hmm. um, uh, like uh, foams, old school, uh, what's that stuff? Nairobi. I oh, love, I love that. Nairobi. Yeah. Love yeah, old school products Nairobi. Are really good. Yeah, so that, can, and that's, again, that's that foamy, watery mm -hmm. type of, of product that works well for me. So, but everyone's different. So, what about um, curl training? How do you uh, teach your clients to train their curls? And what do you? So what do you mean by training? Yeah, what curls? do you mean, Because like, <laughs> I hear that we term. We have a whole article on curl training. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we had a, a stylist talk about how she does curl training. So mm -hmm. someone will come in and you know they want to wear their natural hair. Um, so I guess maybe the way that you wash it, or how many times a day you should twist it, or mm -hmm. um, maybe not putting heat on it mm -hmm. so that it gets heat damaged, mm -hmm. or like that. Um, I guess like, I mean, because you know what heat does do, like, even if you do it sparingly, it does change your curl, you know, your curl texture mm -hmm. and the way your yeah. hair curls. So I guess if someone wants to have the most optimal result of their curls, I would say, yeah, you know, let's stay away from heat. Let's do these 
certain techniques. Um, let's, um, you know, shampoo your hair uh, with certain products. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just depends on, you know, the, what the person. Yeah, the yeah. person and how they see their hair or want their curls to be. Yeah, or their yeah. daily routine, what they do with their hair every day. Exactly. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got an interesting question. So when when you recommend or someone recommends somebody with natural hair to use a specific product, say mm -hmm. like a shampoo or something like that. Okay. So the first time you use it compared to like the 10th time, it might give you a different result. Mm -hmm. Right. So how long during your hair journey <laughs> would you use a product and then finally be like, okay, I give up on this one. Let me try something else. Cause some people might try it one time. Oh, this doesn't work, but right. don't realize like you got to like stick keep with on it for, using it, keep on using it. So usually what do you have an idea of like a time frame that makes sense to keep, keep with something, keep trying it? Yeah. I would say at least give it like, give it at least, three months, three to three to a good three to six months for your hair to, because you got to remember like you grow, your hair grows like what a half an inch a month, you know? And then you have all of these things that play a part in your hair. Like your hair could seasonal, like some people like during certain seasons, their hair is drier, you know? Mm. So, or hormonal, like some people who are pregnant have different, like your hair changes in those certain instances. So I would say kind of like give it a good six months, or yeah, maybe three to six months before saying, okay, it's not really doing what I want it to do before you try to move on to the next, because you have all of those variables. Yeah. 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 Especially even just, you know, changes in hormones monthly that we go through yeah. that changes our hair. Like, you know, they say like during certain times, your hair may be a little bit more oily or maybe a little bit more dry, mm. just depending on you know, our stuff what time of the month, month it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, just kind of, you know, just to have some sort of consistency and um, I would say at least three to six months yeah. of trying one product to see if that's it works. Thing. Yeah. Because yeah. I'll use something and I'll be like, mm -mm, it's not see? working for me. Yeah. That's exactly why. Because <laughs> I, I know how I quick people give up on stuff. <laughs> right. And that's why I wanted a pro's answer because yeah. for me, I would have been like, my guess was, I don't know, a week, two weeks, something <laughs> right. like that. I don't know. Yeah. But like, if it's really that long mm -hmm. to kind of go through the whole thing. I mean, yeah. so when you pick you a product, you better pick something good because it's going yes. to be a time investment <sighs> going through to see if this thing actually, actually works. Actually works. Because I mean, I even have like, clients that come to me when their hair is in totally one shape mm -hmm. and then they come to me over a process of like six months to a year and their hair is totally different yeah mm -hmm. you know and we're using the pretty much the same products you know so it's just like give your hair a chance to adjust to it yeah and if you are trans even if you are like you know transitioning from relaxer to those those curls that you have right now are not even going to be the same kind of curls over the process of using those products using hydration yeah doing all of these things that's not going to be the same head right. that you have right so just give it a chance don't give up and be like oh my god <laughs> i'm over this right i'm over this <laughs> this natural thing ain't working for me oh my god like <laughs> yeah i guess everything is a process it like is that, definitely so what are some of your uh favorite styles to do um let me see i love flexi rods i love that style i love um transitioning people i'm um, going back and forth between like silk press and natural hair okay. um i love haircuts uh designer haircuts i love to cut curly cuts that's a whole new thing oh that that's I, cute mm -hmm. yeah like i love to do that and for women who are just gonna wear their hair natural natural yeah uh -huh. like i love that yeah um yeah that's pretty much oh color i love color so Air the color. green color, you have green color. Yes, it's I have pretty. green I color. I like that. <laughs> you did that. Some bun. I did. Well, they, no, no, I didn't. No, no um, I went to a stylist. See, okay. I went to yep. a stylist <laughs> to get my hair colored. <laughs> Yeah. So you like working with fun colors. I do. So I heard you say you uh, dyed your daughter or colored your daughter's hair pink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so what's your favorite color to uh, color. work with? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So many. Blues, greens, a lot of them. Like, I, I love the whole... Um, line like Paul Bryant like I just love different hair colors mm -hmm. yeah just like kind of um what do you call those uh fashion colors yeah oh yeah like bright bright colors yeah, yeah, yeah. neons now there's this whole thing with neon colors yeah glow in the dark people I see a lot of people um doing the neon colors mm -hmm. now so when someone comes to you and they're like I'm totally fed up I'm <laughs> done with my natural hair it's time for the big chop 
Right. What do you tell them? What you mean, like their natural hair or like a relaxed hair? Like, like they're just their hair. They're just like I'm. I'm cutting it all off. I'm cutting or, some, or going something. Like what do you tell them? They good for something. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm all about it. Like okay, cool. Let's do this. You don't try to talk them out of mm-hmm. it or say we should keep trying no. or something like that. No, or? because I mean, you know, if they're ready for a change, then they're ready for a change. You know. Do you ever recommend it where someone's hair is just so damaged and you're basically like? We're going to have to start over here. Two weeks, (laughs) two weeks ago, literally two weeks ago. Yep. Because a girl came in and she hadn't had her hair. She was in braids because that's a lot of people do. They, you know, they get into these um, protective styles. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with protective styles. It's all about what you do in the interim. So she came in. She was wearing back to back protective styles. She said to me that she hadn't had her hair cut for over a year. Oh, wow. So her hair was when I tried to press it out, her hair was split all the way up the hair shaft. So I'm like, you're going to have to start all over. And she was like, well, so basically, do I need a big chop? I was like, yeah, (laughs) pretty much need that. And so she was like, she's not ready to do that. So then I say, okay, well, we're going to have to kind of like grow your hair like gradually, like you would do. uh, I'm scared of the big chop. You are? Yes. His <laughs> hair, it grows back. I know. I said I wanted to cut my hair, and then after that, I'm like, I'm going to be over it in a week. So. <laughs> but the good I thing shouldn't. is, yeah, I mean, and plus, I mean, you got wigs, weaves. You can always yeah. switch it up. She's got a little access to that. Yeah, just, <laughs> just a smidge, smidge no. access to it. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, what advice would you give to someone um, who is interested in starting their own salon mm-hmm. um, but coming from working in a salon what what's one piece of advice um I would say take your time um, do a little bit of research ask salon owners mm-hmm. you know ask you know maybe get a mentor um, yeah like really just do your research um, again if you're going to be figure out everyone's role, like if you're going to be the creative entity mm-hmm. that you've worked in a salon, you, then you probably need to hire out. Yeah. You know, um, delegate the tasks of having someone run it and or and and run, you know, the social media aspect of it and that sort of things because mm-hmm. you can't do everything. So yeah, nah. that's what I would suggest. You know, okay. talk to people and really, you know, figure out everyone's role. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. And then um, also someone who's, they're getting ready to come to your salon. Um, mm-hmm. They're like, you know, I want to go natural. Um, I'm very scared. I need you to basically hold my hand through this whole thing. What are some tips that you would give them um, that they could do at home in between salon time and, you know, being at home? Oh, I love those. I love those clients. <laughs> <laughs> so those clients um, that come in and they want to go natural, I first ask them, Okay, so what do you want to do? Do you want to grow your hair out um, or do you want to do a big chop? And a lot of times it's always, you know, I want to do the big chop. Oh, really? I mean, not big chop. (laughs) I want to grow my hair. Yeah, I want to grow my hair out. So I would tell them to get into it. What's your lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Like, is your lifestyle really busy? You know, are you going to have time to do this? Yeah. So then, you know, if. It is. Most people's lifestyles are busy. So I suggest them going into a protective style and then coming in um, after about eight weeks when they take that protective style to get um, shampoo trimmed. Gotcha. And then you can go back wear your hair for a couple of weeks at home, Mm -hmm. um, either natural or you know straight or whatever and then go back into a protective style and that and you have that keep that process up until all of your until you're ready to cut most gotcha. of the straight so hair out. You're doing a trim every so often. Exactly. Then, gotcha. Every eight weeks. Every, every eight, eight to weeks. 12 weeks that you're doing the trim. You're up in your protective style. You take down your protective style. You come, You go to a professional. Mm-hmm. And that's when you get your shampoo, your hydration, your trim. And then you can wear your hair out for those, you know, give it a breather. Yeah. And then go back into a protective style. Because then you're not always in your hair. Right. And thinking right, about, right. Yeah. you what know, am I gonna do with my hair what today? am I going to do with my hair today? <laughs> I'm dealing with these two textures. Yeah. It's not fun. That's when most people give up. Yeah. And they're just like, screw it. Yeah. You know, so. It, or they could come see you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or they so, can uh, come Tell see everybody yeah. where you're located again. I am physically located at 2570 Blackman Drive at the Salon Lofts in Decatur. Decatur, Georgia. That's and right. tell everybody where they can find you on social media. On social media, you can find 
find me at Salon Soy. And that's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah we'll put that in the show notes. Yep. So if you go to hairbizradio.com, this is episode 26. We'll make sure we have it in the show notes Yay. for everybody so they can follow you and get the natural hair tips. And yeah. When Atlanta comes see you for that natural hair experience. That's right. Yes. Yeah. I would uh, love to have you. <laughs> Thank Sometimes you so I'm very um, slow about answering my DMs, but you can always <laughs> text me. Or style seat. She has a style Oh, yeah. Style seat. Utilize that booking that's information. That's right. <laughs> Please book online. I'm very busy. Yes. Yes. So thank you so much Troy, oh, for hanging well out done. with us this today. Um, definitely make sure you guys contact the curly hair expert. Go see her out in Decatur. Follow her on social media at Salon Soy. That's S-O-Y. Yep. That's it, guys. All right. And don't this forget to oh, subscribe. Oh, Mikey. Almost, <laughs> almost forgot. Almost forgot to subscribe. <laughs> make sure you guys subscribe. iTunes, Stitcher Radio. I don't know. We might be on iHeartRadio. I've been trying. <laughs> I gotta need to try harder, I guess. Oh Lord! All we'll right. have our new podcast person get it fixed. There we go. All right, guys. Okay. Thanks. Bye. All right, bye.